You were one of 2,200 guests yesterday inside the Abbey. Tell me what it was like. Well, as I sat there, I was thinking about the historic nature of the event, and the, uh, I was really amazed at how well it was organized, <laughs> and also uh, how well uh, the, the music, uh, the organ, and the choir, the music was just phenomenal out of this world, really. It was uh, quite an experience. There has been considerable discussion on modernizing the monarchy. In the Canadian context, what does modernizing the monarchy look like? First of all, I think we have to remember that Canada is, is built on a constitutional monarchy, and it's been a very solid country. And it reflects the way we govern our country with a, when there was a monarch representing at the highest level, but the government itself uh, runs the country. And uh, for me, what's important also is to make sure that before there is ever any decision or, discuss, uh, or uh, the country decides what kind of government or system we should have, Canadians should have a very deep discussion about what the alternatives are. And before, uh, so before we have an alternative, we should not just make those decisions. And I don't think Canada is ready for a constitutional discussion. Why don't you think Canada is ready? Well, there's polls that show that uh, people don't want the, mon mon uh, the constitutional monarchy style anymore. But I haven't heard any discussions about what the options are. What are those options? Canadians need to talk about what those options are. Your Excellency, anybody who knows you knows that you are a bridge builder and you played a pivotal part in getting a historic meeting organized between the King and the leaders of the First Nations, Inuit and um, Métis communities just a couple of days before the coronation. Tell me how that meeting came about. In Canada, uh, I was thinking uh, what we could do to start our conversation with the king. And I felt that it would be really important if the three national indigenous leaders could meet him. So I got, uh, it, I, I organized a, a phone call with His Majesty and uh, talked to him about it. And he was open to it. So the next step was to, to call each of the national indigenous leaders and see whether they were open to having a conversation or an audience with the king. And uh, everybody agreed that it was a good idea. It was a meeting that was only supposed to last 45 minutes, but it actually went on for an hour. Did you have a chance to speak with the king after that meeting? I did. I spoke to him um, briefly after, and then I saw him again uh, later in the day. And uh, he asked me how I felt about the meeting, and I told him that I was um, I thought it was very good and uh, that uh, there was promise there. And also I asked him how he felt and he was very positive. Do you think the king should apologize for the colonial legacy? Well, it, you know, these apologies are very complex and it took uh, many years for us to get an apology from the Canadian government, years of work. Uh, the issue of residential schools took many years before the Pope apologized. So it's difficult to, to say exactly whether there could be an apology. And uh, for me, what's more important to me is to move forward and to not always go to the back, the, the history of our relationship, but also moving forward and talk about actions that can th make things better because an apology is, is, is a words and it makes people feel good and, and deal with their trauma to some extent. But if you don't have any action after that, it's, it stays static as an apology. So for me, the action going forward is extremely important.